Welcome to our daily devotion. The Methodist Church of Barbados invites you to sing, pray, and worship with us as we declare God's glory and celebrate His mighty acts. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we bow before you tonight with gratitude, grateful adorations and praise for the care and protection that you have bestowed on us. We acknowledge your presence with us through the good and not so good times because you are a faithful Father. Jesus, we thank you that whilst you were here on earth, you were never too busy for your people, so much so that you were accused of being a glutton and a drunkard. We thank you that you are the same yesterday, today and forever. You're never too busy to hear us when we call upon you, making our requests known as is recorded in Philippians chapter 4. At this time, we pray for the sick and all those anxiously awaiting diagnoses for various health conditions, the bereaved. 
the shut-in members. And we pray also for the unemployed and the homeless. We pray for peace in Gaza and throughout your world. We pray for the ministerial teams and members of this church. We ask your blessings now on your servant as she brings the words that you have given her. May our hearts be prepared and encouraged. Amen and Amen. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, hallowed be thy name. On the earth as it is in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Give us this day our daily bread, hallowed be thy name. And from Matthew 11 verse 19 and Luke 7 verse 34. Here begins the reading, Matthew 11 19. The Son of Man came eating and drinking, and they say, Look, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners, yet wisdom is vindicated by her deeds. Continuing Luke 7, 34. The Son of Man has come eating and drinking. And you say, Look, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Nevertheless, wisdom is vindicated by all her children. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise be to Christ our Lord. Fix 
fixed upon him, mount of thy redeeming love. sisters. I greet you in the wonderful name of Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Let us pray. Most gracious and loving Lord, your word is a lamp to our feet and a light to our paths. Humble your servant, Lord, and bless your word, that as it goes forth, it will not return to you void, but will accomplish that which it purposes to do. So may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. My brothers and sisters, my reflection is drawn from the above gospel reading, and the theme is 40 Ways to Know Jesus Better, a Friend of Publicans, and sinners. And I begin by asking this question, who were the publicans? My research shows that the publicans were tax collectors who worked for the Roman authorities and were frowned upon with contempt. Ordinary taxes such as land taxes were collected by the Roman officials, but the toll taxes for transporting goods, etc., were usually collected by Jews on the contract with the Romans. These tax collectors, or publicans as they were known, made a profit on the transactions by way of exploitation. They charged more than the required amount of money that was due, hence enriching themselves at the expense of their fellow Jews. And these, my friends, 
are the persons who Jesus associated himself with and was criticized for doing so by the Pharisees, as recorded in Matthew eleven nineteen 19 and Luke seven thirty four, 34, where he is accused of being a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Jesus quoted these criticisms that were made against him. Though these words were meant to condemn Jesus and not as a compliment, to my way of thinking, Jesus really is a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Throughout Jesus' ministry, he could be found among the people who needed him. He visited their homes and sat, ate, and had fellowship with them. Going back to Matthew chapter 9 verses 9 and 10, in verse 9, we see Jesus calling Matthew away from the tax booth to follow him, and he did. Verse 10 tells us, Jesus sat at dinner in the house, which I assume is Matthew's house, and he, Matthew, is the one who organized dinner and invited his friends to come so they could get the chance to meet Jesus. The verse further states that many tax collectors and sinners came and were sitting with him and his disciples. Take note, this same Matthew became one of Jesus' twelve disciples. Jesus ministered to them. Luke 15 1 tells us all the tax collectors and sinners were coming near to listen to him. He visited their homes and fellowship with them. Luke 19 5. It was not because he approved of their beliefs and behavior, not at all. Jesus did not endorse their belief, neither did he endorse their behavior. He befriended them for a reason. Beloved, by befriending these tax collectors and sinners, Jesus was able to do much more for them than those who condemned him. Jesus' mission was to save sinners, and he made that point very clear in Mark 2, 17, when he said, Those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners. People responded to Jesus in different ways. Some, unfortunately, as we heard in the gospel today, did not accept Jesus, Luke 7, 34. But those who did accept him were transformed. I believe Luke is saying to all of us, Look, you have a choice. Reject Jesus and lose out. Or accept Jesus and receive salvation. But we have to get to know him and not of him. Jesus tells us in John three seventeen, Indeed, God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Beloved, Jesus' ministry was directed at those who were willing to acknowledge their sinfulness and repent. In Luke 5.32, Jesus tells us, I have come to call not the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Beloved, we are in the Lenten season. And, this, and there is a cliche which says, It is Lent and the devil is out. But we all know that the devil is always out to torment God's children. For Christians, Lent emphasizes an awareness of the sin that separates us from God. Lent is a season of repentance. It is why we begin the season with Ash Wednesday and we go to church. We have broken our faith with God and we want to do better. There is only one path that is going to lead us away from the sin that weighs us down and the path is Jesus Christ. Jesus summed it up himself in John 14, 6. I am the way, the truth, and the life. 
No one comes to the Father except through me. That is why repentance is never just a turning from sin, but a turning to Jesus Christ and intentionally saying to him, Lord Jesus, take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to thee. Beloved, throughout the Gospels, we see men and women who have been changed and transformed. Zacchaeus, Matthew, Mary Magdalene, and the woman taken in adultery. All of them had a personal encounter with the friend of sinners, and they were never the same again. Beloved, this can be our experience as well. Sinners were drawn to Jesus because of his ways. He did not shun them, but instead he embraced them. This is what angered the Pharisees and the religious leaders around him. Beloved, Jesus is love, and he loves us unconditionally. His love for humankind has neither length or depth. This is what the Pharisees and the leaders uh, around him could not comprehend. And out of their ignorance, they accused him of being a friend of tax collectors and sinners. My brothers and sisters, you and I are sometimes behaving just like the Pharisees. Jesus wants us to be forgiving, compassionate and loving to those labeled as vagrants and are rejected by us. Even some of our own family members are labeled this way. These are the people we come into contact with on a daily basis. They come to the church. They are in our community, around the schools and supermarkets, etc. They are everywhere. We just have to look around us. These are the people God wants you and I to embrace uh, and live among. So, like, so let's honor God by showing them love uh, as he has loved us, by reaching out to them willingly and lovingly. Christian friends, uh, we are living in perilous times, uh, and the heart of man has waxed cold. Jesus stands before each of us tonight. And he offers us his friendship, just as he offered it to the outcasts and sinners, for we all are sinners. The Apostle Paul reminds us in Romans 3, 23, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Christian friends, the more we accept Jesus' offer, the more we are transformed to become what we are meant to be. Jesus' offer of friendship is accepted by spending time with him. And in his word, we have to knock at his door, enter into his presence, and sit at his feet. Just as did all the characters in the gospel who became Jesus' friends, Jesus' offer of friendship is accepted by opening our hearts to him. Accepting Jesus' friendship empowers us to do what others would never dream possible for us. Accepting Jesus as our friend frees us from our baggage because we can cast all our cares upon him, allowing him to take full control so that we can live the life of Jesus fully with no distraction. Let us spend the days that remain in this Lenten season not thinking about the things that we have given up, but to know Jesus better. We do this by praying, fasting, and giving alms. So get to know Jesus better this Lent by praying before the suffering Christ, fast with the suffering Christ, and give alms to the suffering Christ. Jesus was a friend of sinners in that he came to save sinners and was very pleased to welcome sinners who were opened to the gospel. 
Amen. Let us pray. Most merciful and loving Lord, we thank you for giving us the opportunity to fellowship with you and with each other. Loving Lord, may we feel you move within our hearts and be obedient to your will. Gracious Lord, we ask that you pour your spirit upon us and enable us to mature and grow spiritually. Father God, we pray for those labeled as vagrants and outcasts among us. Lord, help us to love each other as you love us and that we may be moved by your love to reach out to those imprisoned or oppressed, those who suffer from abuse or violence, those who feel forgotten, abandoned, or alone. Lord, we ask that you make our hearts to become warm with your tenderness and love, as you enable us to touch the life of someone in a special way. Heavenly Father, we pray for those who become targets because they take a stand for Christ, those who have to hide on the ground to worship and sing praises to your name. Gracious God, build a hedge of protection around them and keep them covered in the precious blood of Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ sustain, rest, and remain with us all, now and forevermore. Amen. A peaceful and quiet night's rest to all. Thank you for being a part of our daily devotion. We trust it has been a blessing to you. Now together, let us hold fast to his word and may it dwell in all of us richly.